In troubled waters we saw Martin known as Nutty Noah, with a dream of becoming a pilchard fisherman. With the support of his wife Sally, Nutty dealt with the sinking of his boat Penrose, market failures and huge financial debts. But still with all that he managed to fulfil his dream. After three long years we left them, serving pilchards prepared in a secret recipe, and with the hope of producing and selling them themselves. Another fisherman is in a dust. Ah, I hope I won't be going in the bin, but this little chap is. I've got to move into a couple of caravans to uh, get some money coming in when we let the house out, so as we can keep up the bank payment for the boat. And uh, got more cobwebs and clutter than I've ever seen. 15, 16 years of uh, accumulating things and over the next couple of days we shall be uh, moving out and hopefully three four days time we'll be in their caravans. As long as we've got a freezer and, and the gun, I think we'll be alright. Oh good, I'm on the land. The more one is closed, don't they? Oh, hope that wasn't breakable, whatever that was in there. <laughs> He's only black and white, but he's a picture. <laughs> well, What's best to do? Martin and Sally's move to the good life at their so-called ranch oh, is locally well known. Among the animals they've been offered yeah, is a dying yeah, ferret. Over, this yeah, takes up precious time that should be spent on preparing for the arrival oh, okay. of the new tenants. But Martin is in no rush. Well, I mean, he, he's quite an old ferret, isn't it? Mm. Uh, well, he, he got very great lump there, we're, we're even doctored, like, you know. Uh. He didn't, and lovely animal he is. Shame, because he's a lovely animal. Yeah. He yeah. Quit, or I put my hand there, he'll lick my bloody arm, yeah, up and down. And yeah, we'll, we'll have him, we'll have him, and um, when he get too bad, I'll do something by him. Yeah. yeah. Deal done, just as a couple yeah. arrive. Yeah, we'll be well, you'll be sorted out soon. Then. Yeah, another couple, three days, we'll be all right. Yeah. Now Martin's been caught on the hop. Lop the tree off and a little branch off in mother's with a chainsaw standing on the back of the truck and I misjudged it and it hit flipping the windscreen. We get a new windscreen and they're glued in. Well that's a big old change really Mark. Very big change, a bit frightening really Jed because he's it's serious isn't it? The amount of money I gotta find is astronomical now. He's They, uh, the banks want, want so much money because I sort of put on hold. Ha! Uh, it's cost money, isn't it? They're like 700 quid a month now. So I've got to catch a lot of sharks, haven't I? And I aren't able to go because I'm moving out. If the carpet isn't pulled out from underneath my feet, perhaps I'll try next week to go fishing. And, uh, like I said, I haven't been for about a month. With the failure of the catching all those pilchards in the market and all, I just wasn't able to make a go of it below. So when I do catch a shark, so hopefully people don't do gooders, don't give me too much grief. After the problems encountered with health and safety, cooking his own pilchards never got off the ground. And so Martin returned to sharking. He spent months tracking the shoals, and then in December last year. His horizons looked a lot brighter when he caught 150 sharks in one week. But he wasn't prepared for the uproar and worldwide news coverage this would bring. No, 
other day out on the briny, we got force force four easterly, and we don't know whether we're going to catch anything because this is quite a rough day for this method of fishing. But we're hopeful. You guessed four, didn't he, Jay? And I guessed twelve, and he hasn't said nothing. All he said was he was sick. He sicked up my dinner. Carry on. How many shirts you got there, Mark? How many you got? I think about 60 shirts, I think. 50 or 60. That's, that's mega unusual. Oh, God. Most of them were four, like 16. That's a good catch. But this time they were, they were coming up thick and fast, you know? So well, well worth persevering because all summer we've been trying and trying all the time. Dwindling fish stocks have led one Cornish fisherman to trawl for an unusual catch, shark. In just a couple of trips, he landed more than 100, and he's going back for more. Conservationists are worried about the impact on the shark population. Well, John Kay is in Newlyn. John. Well, Sophie, it's not that unusual for fishermen to catch the odd poor beagle shark in these waters here. This one has just been landed in the last few minutes, but nobody's ever heard of one man catching as many as 128 in a single week. How did he do it? Well, he was targeting them specifically, and conservationists say that is a very dangerous precedent. One, two, three. Hup. Another one that didn't get away. Reba, Reba, Reba! <laughs> Look at the size of that one! When Martin Ellis got back to shore, he couldn't believe his eyes. In all, 128 sharks, a profit of £7,000 pick up your hook. Today he showed me how he used hooks and mackerel bait to catch a haul that has changed his life. To actually get into some heavy fishing like this and earn some serious money has been well, like manna from heaven. It's taken him two years to find a spot where sharks are so plentiful but conservationists say it's a dangerous precedent which could soon lead to extinction. Very shortly the, the numbers will drop there won't be any around for the other fishermen, the populations will have gone and we'll have lost a highly evolved, very elegant predator from British waters. Shark meat is popular on the continent, but tonight as this massive haul was packed up for export, environmentalists pleaded with fishermen to stop targeting the creatures. Those conservationists say that sharks simply can't reproduce and repair themselves in great numbers quickly enough. But fishermen here are saying they can't be that endangered if one man can catch more than 120 in a single week. So Martin Ellis is planning to go out again tomorrow to catch some more, and he expects many other fishermen here to follow him. Further trips fail to produce another large catch for Martin. Well, there you are, look. Three poor beagles. 300 hooks, and that's reality, isn't it? 44 kilos we got here, call it 50 kilos, 100 quid. Might not go again for several days now because they get bad, got to get bad weather coming in, but um, still you get condemned. Message received. Tuesday, 
December 2nd at 1.31 p.m. You can tell your husband he's a bloody disgrace to Tony's men, and he'll be dying with them sharks. Martin's excitement of providing desperately needed wages is soured by the bad press and death threats. He tries to put it all behind him and concentrates on the houseman. New home. Sally's mother is here with us and she's allowed us to come up here and uh, put these caravans here. She looked after us and we look after her. <laughs> There's still laws and regulations on the animals, the same as at the sea. You've got to tell Defra how many pigs you got and tell them how many chickens you got. I don't think they want to know how many eggs you got yet, but that won't take long for them to find that out. Poor little things, they've got no feathers on their fronts. Because that's all they had to do all day, is to peck their feathers out. Kept the battery, I suppose. Yeah, they were. Oh, there's another one. Oh, you clever little girl is. Yes, you are. Well, we haven't actually moved in yet, but we're very happy, of both of us. You want something to eat, my little darlings? Come on out for a little walk. Dog in, perks out. There's that old dog, Jed. The dog ferret that Michael the chap hadn't hadn't for a bit of a while. He, he was bold at the time, and now he's, all his fur has come back, and he's been been playing with the youngsters. And I found a good way of cleaning the saucepan. Oh, no. After scrambled egg, they chew off most of it. That is disgusting. <laughs> Well, moving up here, I'm calling it Nutty Nose Ranch. We've had a taste of the good life. And being a fisherman, I know nothing about pigs and chickens. I only know a little bit about ferrets, that's all. My cousin, Andrew Stevens, he found them at sea. Very thick pieces of wood, uh, I cut them in half. Sally creosoted them. And um, we're gonna make a lean to. Mind your head. So I've got my work cut out for me over the next few months. Putting cross members across here as I go. And um, should be all hunky dory. And I've got to do a bit of accurate sawing with a chainsaw to get the beans on. I got grade, grade one jetting. GSE. It's not surprising that Martin's got cats on his mind. 
There have been local sightings of large wild cats, and Moana, his daughter, was frightened when out riding one evening. Went in there to have a little canter round. Um, walked in, and then Clem chased a rabbit, so I sat on the pony laughing my head off. Oh, fuck, kind of funny. And then I looked over into the far corner, over on the left cor left hand corner, and I just saw this black, black panther. And it just ran straight along the field. And it was just pure black and very sleek. And it didn't make eye contact with me and it just ran straight for the bushes. Dog was going absolutely mad. Horse was all over the place. She, his shoe was looking in the direction and like walking around in circles, like trying to calm her down, trying to calm herself down, trying to use the phone, <laughs> trying to tell dad. Martin being a natural born hunter can't resist tracking down others with tails of the big cat. Something must have made me look up to my left. Mm. As I glanced up in the tree, something I can describe as dark animal, very long, went at that sort of angle down mm -hmm. the tree. Mm. I sort of kind of half got up because I thought, what on yeah. earth is that? Mm. And at that point, it must have gone around, and there's woodlands behind here. Oh, yeah. And not long after that, there was, this was the more frightening bit, the noise of something crashing and thrashing. Um, and that noise went on for quite a while. And it right. was at that point that I did start to get a Were bit it? nervous. Yeah. And I mean, I've walked these cliffs for years and years and yeah. never been nervous around them. But it was the noise that was the frightening yeah. bit. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Is this a feel that Moena and my daughter saw him in last night, up somewhere between 10 to him, 5 to 8. It must be about that time now, might be a bit later, a bit earlier. But he came out of that corner there and went in this corner while she was on a pony in the middle of this meadow. So we're here waiting to see if he come along the same track. What I found out, the local chap from Lizard called Billy Lovell, seen him before. He's um, he he'd been chasing crows in the corn arrow field, other side of the edge. So they crows and gulls are quite often have a rest up before they go roost. And uh, he might be lying awake for they. So it's hang fire here for half half hour, quarter an hour, just while it's still light to see if we can see him. But it might I must emphasise it might not be the same one as down at Poltesco, because I think. Billy Lovell seen it here the same day as Sir Fox seen the other one in Poltesco, so I reckon there's two. I'm certainly getting more sightings from as we look into this, more pe more and more people are seeing them. Squeaking, be prepared to switch her on and see if we can get a close up view of the Black Panther. The night long vigil was unsuccessful, but Martin wasn't deterred. He later went to meet artist and dozer Bart O'Farrell at Prothalo, where a large footprint was found. That sightings of black cats in this area soon are, you know, up at uh, my neighbour mm. and also um, Amanda, um, not Amanda, Tom. Um, Diane Donahue over at Prowstock. Wow. So we know there is something appearing and disappearing in this area yeah, yeah. Of, of a size. Um, but uh, I mean, this is this is a big paw print. Yeah. What tells you it's a cat? Um, <laughs> was it a dog? That's my no. Was it of the cat family? That's my yes. That's 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 how I think it's a cat. And the paw prints are certainly quite impressive. And it's carrying some weight. Um, even, even though the ground is, is soft, um, you've got to be our sort of weight to make an impression in, in, in the ground. So it, it's, it's, it's got a heaviness to it. I mean, it is a phenomenon. Um, it's amazing that Ted spotted it. 
and picked it up. But I'm thrilled with bits that are, you asked me in as a dowser, um, because this is discussed in dowsing circles. And uh, I've actually been able to douse this phenomenon, and I'll probably send a note off into the dowsing magazine, see what they make of it. Further sightings in the area brings professional tracker Ian Maxwell to Trigger Minion. I think that's, I think that's where, it's, where it's gone through the, when it's been milled. Yeah, yeah. It'll be the same, the same sort of thing. Yeah, I don't, don't know. Yeah. I don't know, to be honest. Oh, I mean, we'll, we'll have a look around this, actually, because there's, there'll be more around here. Well, Ian haven't found any tracks yet. He's been unsure of the scratch marks. I would have thought that where we first looked on that edge, he probably put some bait there, I don't know. But a salted down stake he got him. Eh? Right, at the bottom of the valley, there's a track or a trail that's been used a lot. Cows have obviously got out fairly recently, but there's a lot of that. Okay. It's longer than a cow's hair, is it? It's uh, yeah, this is lower down than, than a cow's hair. Okay, because that's what we're going to look for now. Because there's definitely a predator down there, and we just got to find more of these yep. bits of rabbit, bits of crow. Inspired by Ian's methods, Martin returns to Paul Tusco to do his own tracking. But in his excitement, he temporarily forgets that cats bury their turds. We have to look into what the uh, excrement is looking like of this panther, Jed, because um, this is in the same place where dogs go to the toilet, and I wouldn't have thought that would be in a dog. I don't know, but there are all sorts of seeds in there and bits of grass. I know dogs eat grass to make themselves sick, but that's rabbit fur or rat fur. Look. See that? Uh, there wouldn't be an owl pellet, would it? Too big. And yet you've got seeds, fur. That's definitely fur. Look. Another interesting bit of information we got. A very good old school friend of ours, Jed's and mine, called Charlie Horner. He saw it probably five or six years ago, I'm not sure when. It's over the top of that hill, the other side of Innis, Cadriff side of Innis. On the footpath, he had his head in the bushes and he came around the corner and seen it. Oh, the panther had his head in the bushes, not Charlie. <laughs> but he, he got pretty close to him and he was a bit frightened at the, at the time because he could, could have got a got up closer to it but he took the panther got his head out of the bushes and looked at him in the eye and turned and went the other way and it startled him quite a bit because he was wondering who was, who was going to have to give way and I took, took my torna, my daughter out there to see the footprints and we actually saw the footprints. I think it's you. Hunting cats is forgotten about as Martin concentrates on weather proving his new home. You stay right from the concrete. Oh, I tell you what you want to put the watering can over that Tamp it down a bit. I've beaten around the back head with a piece of wood. <laughs> Coming on, generous. Like all of us on a budget, necessity is the mother of invention. Nice bit of carpet. Chicken wire to keep them up there. Plywood on top of the carpet. Any old bit of plywood, thin stuff, and then the galvanised. And, uh, all the way down to that corner and that way and doing the shut up so it's coming on I thought I'd better have a bit of a flat floor in here the concrete floor from here up long uh, we've got a sewerage to put in down through and a digger coming next week to put the giant onion in the ground for the septic tank so we're coming on by degrees. You want to try that mattress out because I'm sure there's not enough room for me on there. It don't look a lot for me. <laughs> Come on. You're going to stay the same side, Zorus. I'm yes. I'm on the. I'm on the side. You're on the starboard side. <laughs> it was port side. It's 
Right there. No, your, your head's touching the thing. Now your feet are hanging over the end. Look. Well, your arm's in the way. Drop, drop a wine and it'll be... Move your arm out the way. <laughs> Give me some room. I think we need a bigger I, mattress. I think we need a bigger mattress too. That would be right for tired now. <laughs> Let's go get the big mattress. All right. I can't cope with this. Mm. I got a job get out my son. Yeah. I at least don't skid across this one. Yeah, that's the trouble. I was thinking of you skidding across the lead. from behind you go quicker now. Is it the wrong way around? Oh, that looks better. That looks better. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yep. Right, where's the wine? Oh, the girls are in there painting the caravan out, soft reds and yellows and blues. So that's coming on now. <laughs> Paint it up a bit, Jed. Thought we'd make it a bit nicer, a bit home more homely than the old Granny 5 wallpaper that was here before. What do you think of it, Jed? Plenty of roof area here now. All sealed up pretty, nailed down. We had a gale of force 10 to 11 Eastly, nor easterly yesterday, put the good test to him. Never leaked the drop. Well, he was one little drop, a couple actually. Vast expanse of galvanite. <laughs> Pairing for winter. Martin and Sally's 20 year wedding anniversary is celebrated with a barbecue at Kennick Creek. Oh my god, Tim! Hello! Oh, good to see you! Thank you! <laughs> you are wonderful! You are darling, Jamie, the card, anniversary well, card. Very kind of you. Thank you very much. I do care for you. What beautiful flowers! <laughs> You know I like purple. Oh, oh. I didn't realise how relevant it yeah, was. Yeah, absolutely. I thought you had electricity. No, not yet. You were supposed oh, no. to do it on Tuesday and you didn't come. Naughty. Oh, well, you've got to cut the skin you carry. <laughs> Dairy milk. <laughs> 
I think what we need. I'll break it all down. Oh, He's going to have singing lessons while we're down. <laughs> as, as well as guitar lessons. As well as guitar. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going. <laughs> no, we've all been on the summer holiday. <laughs> oh, I haven't been yet. But what you don't know is the treasure of the land and land. <laughs> well, we got married and got twin and then we got to... Here we are, 20 years from now, and I think I don't think I aren't going to do it anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Sit down. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, we've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was all our very, very good close friends around us. It was brilliant. Mm. And all day today, people have been going past the crow's nest that came to the barbecue and saying, fantastic, absolutely great. Mm. We really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And thank you for inviting us. I thought, you're our friends. That's right, I've got to invite there. you. Yeah. Oh, you mean them saying no, it? Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you spend last night then? On the beach, <laughs> by the fire. <laughs> but I did go up the valley where they had a rave. I hope you don't don't mind or feel any uh, grudge against me on that, darling. Really? But uh, that was the first time I ever been to a rave. Really? I didn't pop no pills, but I did have a little a little bit of smoke. Some great works of art are conceived when under the influence. Martin's imagination needed no influence when he recently decided to concentrate on his artwork. We've got to get into the art world. Expressive, abstract art. I'll explain to you what I've done here picture of Cornwall. The silver represents the tin. The veins represent the people of Cornwall in the past. And the little dots represent tourism coming down onto the beaches. And the yellow haze is the covering up of the history and the life of Cornwall. Some people do, they must buy it. We seem to have 
hung together and uh, gone through gone through a bit of a rough time. Marriage is still strong. My two daughters are around me and the wife. And uh, we settle in here now with, with the pigs and the chickens and the ferrets and, and a couple, three doves and uh, guinea pigs and rabbits. It's quite nice, really. <laughs> Did you get those pheasants, Jed? They've just gone and ran up past here. They're a little bit shy at the moment because they're a bit shy of these chickens. But I'm hoping to breed the, the pheasants with these chickens. And I'm going to call them fez chicks. There is a little scheme I got. I think I might make a make a little fortune on this because they're for the shooting syndicates, and for the shooting people who can't shoot fast flying pheasants. These will be low slow ones. In my imagination, I would have thought they would go. Something like that. Judging by what these are making. What we got to do now is. Uh concentrate on a on a party, a housewarming party, well, a caravan warming party really, and my birthday. You get a focal point on parties, don't you? Uh, Sally doesn't really want me to spit roast one of the pigs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's one of those little stumbling blocks I get to get over. She's quite adamant I aren't, aren't going to do it, but a bit like North American Indians or the Aborigines and all that, you've got You've got to have somewhere where people meeting and relaxing and having a good time. And one of you is going to accompany me to my party. Yes! Is it going to be you? Dear old boy. I like apple sauce on a bit of pork. There's a lot of beer going to be consumed, and when beer went one end, he got great the other. I did think about having the toilets on the other side of the caravan. Plastic all the way along there. They'll, they'll smell the... Uh, Horse manure to make them feel at home. The men will be here now and have a pee again in the caravan. And the ladies will be around the back. Probably I'll get a bucket with put a bit of foam on it and uh, probably a bit of loo paper on a bit of binder twine around the back. I could use, even use the pig trough and the hose for a bee day if anybody wants to be ultra clean. What I thought was, we'd have party tricks. I mean, youngsters, when they have parties, they always have little games, don't they? My game is going to be... Let's see it, if anybody... <laughs> if anybody can... can <laughs> 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 They smell of rabbits. Rabbit smell is like rabbit pee. Oh, we've got that bowl to put that joint in on us. When were they shot? Last night. Looks like he's got slippers on. Hey? Looks like he's got slippers on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll make a stew up for everybody. Everybody's going to have a good nose shot. What's up, Dark Steel? Attract rats? No. <whistles> Don't want to throw a bit in, do you? Ah! <sighs> you must have smelt some rabbit on your broidery. Nice and warm in here. You mustn't lean again, that, so you might get burned. We'll get one going now, Jed, shall us? Onions and salt and water. I ain't got nothing else at the moment. Right, I got on more now. I'll pick me up some glasses and come back up. All right, Dan. Thank you. Right, we can barbecue the long ones. We want to make out he's a pig. We're experimenting. Next year we'll have to have a pig. See, and Sally don't want us to do that. One of those pigs, which is a bit of a lash. But... Martin put six on the DEFRA form. 
and this is now the third time that I've told him that I crossed it out and put seven. Oh. And he, he's, he's doing, yeah, you see, he's making out, he doesn't know. Can you please not make it an issue today? I had enough the other night. You spoiled my dinner, I put Peter and Anne's by what? going on about it. Will you let me speak and don't interrupt me? Don't make an issue of it today because I don't want the day ruined. All right? Up all the rabbit thread, have you? Yeah, all done, all ready to go. Lovely. 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 <laughs> That's men's toilet, sorry. Men's toilet, for the leg dread. No roast pork, and not everyone's a lover of rabbit stew. It's actually nice, but I haven't tried it. Eat it. Eat it. That's a good thing. That was good. Oh, it's a good thing. Oh, that was just sick, man. Oh, I thought it was going to be a good thing. Oh, that was just sick, man. 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 Guys, if you want to go to the bar to get another pipe, I might slightly feel slightly intoxicated. <laughs> I, I feel very proud to stand in front of all my friends and you would get the <laughs> centre of attraction on me saying something funny next. I never erected a chimney before in my life at all and away. <laughs> Did you know this wood burning stove is in my mother's bungalow? With just a few left around the fire, Martin breaks into song about Molly's wood burner. My friend bought the chimneys to me today, and we wrecked it by fire. We got it going, and we made a rabbit stew on my lovely fire. <laughs> night, night, darling. Night, night, darling. Don't forget to look underneath your bed for monsters. Some party, chat. My last present, which was this morning, from Anne's pasty shop. Uh, have a guess what's in this box? Retallic beef and lizard teddies. And here she is, look. That's some pasty, isn't it? Look at this, look. From the lizard. Plenty of onion, with love. I want another painting. I've done a painting of a catch of sharks. The first catch of sharks I had about 15 years ago. I have painted it and she's got it. So she wants me to do another painting. How could you eat that parrot? They obviously seen shifting sands. After the party, it's time for Martin to face reality. His hopes and dreams of keeping prevail and earning a living from the sea has finally got to come to an end. Literally today is another starting another chapter in my life and it has been emotional for me this last few hours before you got here because this is the end. It's Still in her, Sean. Yeah, I've had enough. Thrown the towel in, Jed, and uh, I think I've given it a barrel crack. 
rented a house out to get some money in to uh, pay for the boat, which is still paying for the boat right at this moment. I think more than likely the house will have to go up for sale within the next week or two. Because even if we sold the boat for 40 grand, I'm 100,000 pound in debt, and it's gone in and just, I just lost a lot of money. The, when I bought the license, I lost six grand. The engine went and broke down. Uh, I had to buy that big ring net, which we went over France for. That was four and a half grand. All those things adding up, adding up, 100,000. I can't believe it, but uh, when I'm home, I haven't missed it that much because I'm not near the sea. But I'm gonna miss the sea if I uh, go near it. <laughs> After telling the family that he's resigned to the fact that the house and prevail have to be sold, Martin goes on to say. Another thing, girls, what we've got to consider is grandma and grandpaps, my mum and dad. Um, as we know, two or three days ago, the paps has got cancer. And he's got cancer in the eye and it, He's got to either have chemotherapy or have his eye removed, and I can't think of anything worse than you would have, have your sight gone for me. But grandma is going to be a bit stressed out as well. But think about your mum and your grandma a little bit more, because although you've got a life you're leading and it's quite hectic, like it is in children's heads, but you've got to think of us more. I right, love you both. Not willing to dwell too long on serious matters, Martin soon changes the mood. <laughs> you should see the pig when he's pissed. It's so funny. <laughs> we had a, a umdinger of a party and ne next day, well, it was a couple of days after actually, um, I had several pints of beer and in all of the barrels gave them a bucket and half a beer. <laughs> I, I scratched them behind the ear and then giving them a tick tickle around the tum and he fell over in the mud and got stuck. <laughs> That's why my pub is called the Tiddly Pig. <laughs> he actually died happy because he was eating at the time. And I didn't like doing it. It was it was a bit um, funny old feeling actually killing an animal which you've been scratching and you've been squeaking away and I liked him dearly but he had a lovely life and we got a face up to it we got to eat. Been in the trade now all of one hour and it's, it's knowing where to have the, the right appropriate cut. I expect the butcher will be laughing If you don't know how to do anything, you just gotta try. Do your best. I think we've got a bit wrong, I don't know. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong, but my mummy's thinking what's gonna fit in the oven. Don't call that to it, do you? Shoulder with it. The money we get from the eggs, paying for the chicken food and paying for the pig food. And this here, which is belly. What I like to do, I seen it on a shop in on television the other day, put the herbs and the salt on there, roll it up, tie it up with string and put it in the oven and go down for a few pints and have a few more and come back <laughs> and have a good nosh up along with a few friends. All right, so pick up a bag and we'll start bagging her up. Right. Yeah. Have a bit of pork knife, yeah. You got one of these in there. Belly. Belly. Another belly. No, not that one. Hey, where's the pork? Been given a bit of pork to Sydney, local fish and chip man. Fish and chips. He's down room minor tonight, so off we go to give him a bit of pork for a place or a bit of cold. Come in. 
doing quite a bit of bartering. These chips are handsome, Sal, aren't they? Yes, they really are. Good old Sid. What's it like now living 24 hours a day with Martin and so <laughs> You want the truth? <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Can't kiss you, darling. We'll do it directly. <laughs> and kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky boy. At the end of troubled waters, I said goodbye to Martin and Sally, but I soon realised there had to be a follow-on. I watched Nutty revive the pilchard fishery and felt his enthusiasm and despair. Now the house and prevail have been sold, the banks have been paid, and Martin and Sally have found contentment at Nutty's ranch. But I'm not sure for how long. Nutty's just like an old sea dog, he has salt water in his veins. How long, I wonder, will he be satisfied reliving memories and feeding the gulls?